In the bottom left-hand corner of the slide is the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention logo, which also shows that CDC is a part of the Department of Health and Human Services. Hello and welcome to Heads Up for High Schoolers Childhood-Led Exposure Prevention Education from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Lead Poisoning Prevention and Surveillance Branch. The purpose of this video is to show how and where people can be exposed to lead and to show that lead poisoning is harmful to children, teens, and adults. A male teacher is holding a pointer stick in one hand and a book in the other. Next to him is text and a graphic showing the symbol for lead on the periodic table. What is lead? Lead is a metal that occurs naturally in the environment. The symbol PB is an abbreviation of the Latin word for lead, plumbum. Lead is solid at room temperature. Its atomic number is 82, and atomic weight is 207.2. Lead is used in industrial and consumer products. Lead poisoning happens when lead is absorbed into the body over time. Even small amounts of lead can cause health problems. A female teacher is holding a book next to a chalkboard containing words that explain the importance of knowing about lead. Many people believe that lead is no longer a problem, but there are cases of lead poisoning in the United States every year, and some people may be exposed to lead and not know it. Knowing more about lead and where it can be found may help reduce harmful exposure. What is lead poisoning? Lead poisoning, also known as lead toxicity, refers to exposures to lead that result in illness and require immediate medical attention. Lead poisoning is caused by eating or swallowing lead or products containing lead. Lead can also enter the body by inhaling lead dust or fumes and through absorption of retained bullet fragments. Children under 6 years old are most at risk. It can be fatal or may cause long-term health and behavioral problems. At the top of the slide are graphics of the organs in the body that may be harmed by lead exposure. These organs include the brain, the kidneys, the liver, the blood, and the reproductive organs. Underneath the graphics of the organs are square boxes with text, and below the boxes of text are graphics to represent a baby, a teenager, an adult, and a pregnant person. Lead exposure is harmful to everyone and affects multiple organs in the body, including the brain, kidneys, liver, blood, and reproductive systems. Children who are under six years of age are most vulnerable to lead. Their nervous systems are still developing, and they absorb four to five times more than adults, which can cause intellectual disability, underperforming at school, and behavioral problems. In teens, early exposure to lead in childhood may result in attention deficit issues that may cause difficulties in school. In adults, lead exposure may increase the risk of heart disease and stroke. In pregnant women, lead exposure may contribute to harmful health conditions during pregnancy and may also affect the developing fetus. Now we will further explore places within the household people can be exposed to lead. Lead exposure may occur at home. There is a cross-sectional view of a two-story house. A bedroom and a bathroom are upstairs, and a living room, kitchen, and garage are downstairs. Let's take an in-depth look into this home and learn about different places that can be a potential source of lead exposure. Lead in paint was officially banned in 1978. So let's say this house was built in 1975. It may not look exactly like your home, and you may not have younger siblings, but it is important to understand possible lead exposure risks. You may know someone with children or younger siblings, or you may visit or eventually buy an older house built before 1978. During this tour, we will go from room to room identifying common sources of lead exposure. Children younger than 6 years old are at a higher risk for negative effects from lead. It is important to understand where lead exposures may be to protect young children. Lead Hazards in the Bedroom there is an image of a bedroom containing a bed, bookshelf with toys, and toy jewelry on it, a nightstand with a lamp on it, a radiator, and a large window. The toys, toy jewelry, large window, and radiator are highlighted as potential lead hazards. Toys imported from other countries or that are antique, for example, toys that are passed down from previous generations, 
may contain high levels of lead in the paint or plastic. When a child puts these toys in the mouth, they can ingest lead. Lead-based paint is still one of the most common sources of lead exposure in a child's environment. When windows painted with lead-based paint are opened and closed, it can cause the paint to chip or create lead dust particles. You can't see lead dust, and it can get into the air and onto windowsills, floors, toys, and pets. Children may touch these items and put their hands in their mouths or put the item directly in their mouths and ingest lead. Paint on radiators in older homes may contain lead. Toy jewelry has also been known to contain lead. Children can get sick or even die if they put these items in their mouths or swallow them. Bathroom lead hazards. There is an image of a bathroom with a toilet, bathtub, a window, and a sink with a small bottle of cosmetic product on it. The window, bathtub, and cosmetic product are highlighted as potential lead hazards. Here's a bathroom and another window. Again, Windows can be a major source of lead exposure for children because they can create lead dust or cause lead paint to chip. Remember, lead paint is a big concern in homes built before 1978. Also highlighted is the bathtub. If lead pipes are used in a home or to bring water to the home, then any source of water in the home can expose a person to lead. Letting water run for three to five minutes can help flush out pipes before using or drinking the water. The lipstick on the sink is highlighted to represent cosmetics. Some cosmetics imported from other countries can be a source of lead exposure. Lead hazards in the kitchen. There is an image of a kitchen that is equipped with a stove, a sink, a refrigerator with an ice maker, a countertop, and cabinets. There are spice containers on the countertop. The faucet, spices, and ice maker on the refrigerator are highlighted as potential lead hazards. The kitchen may also have lead hazards. Highlighted here are the faucet and the water dispenser in the refrigerator. Any source of water in a home can be a source of lead exposure if lead pipes are in the home or if lead pipes bring water to the home. If water in a home is contaminated with lead, then not only is the water from a refrigerator contaminated, but so is the ice it creates. And this one might surprise you. Lead is sometimes used to enhance the color of spices like turmeric, or it is used to weigh down spices to increase profits. A spice that is commonly known as a source of lead exposure is turmeric, and it is always important to research spice brands prior to purchasing them. Living areas of the home may contain lead. There is an image of a living room with a couch, an ottoman, a desk with a computer on it, a table with a television on it, a window, and a door. The door is highlighted as a potential lead exposure hazard. Please note the door highlighted in red. Living areas of the home may have doors coated with lead paint that can chip, flake, or turn into lead dust when a door is open and shut. Sources of lead carried in the home shows a picture of an entryway leading into a garage. The garage has a car inside. There are two steps with two tennis shoes to represent walking up the stairs to a door. There is a door leading into an entryway storage room that has a coat closet and shoe storage. The car, the door, and the entryway room are highlighted as potential lead hazards. If a person has an occupation or hobby that exposes them to lead, they may carry it into the home on their clothes, shoes, and body. Contaminated clothing and shoes can also transfer lead to other clothing and shoes if they are not washed before being stored in the home, exposing others in the household to lead. Auto and industrial admissions can be a source of lead in the air. Sources of lead all over the home environment shows a cross-sectional view of a two-story house. There is text above the image of the house listing the different sources of lead. Lead exposure can come from all over a child's home environment. It can be in food from cans if lead solder was used, or from lead dust in the air getting on the food or inhaled. It can be in the air from industrial admissions, or lead dust created from things such as lead paint on windows. It can get into the soil from the lead in water or fuel. It can be from other sources in a child's environment, such as toys, jewelry, or paint.
Lead dust on the floor can also be picked up by the family pet. Understanding the different avenues for lead exposure in a child's life is the first step in preventing lead poisoning. Next, we will discuss sources outside the home and where families may be exposed to lead. Many occupations and industries are known for potential lead exposure. A few examples include some construction jobs, battery manufacturing and recycling, pottery making, and occupations using firearms. If a person pursues a job in one of these industries, it is important to practice lead-safe behaviors, taking shoes off outside of the home before entering, for example. Later in the presentation, we will go over more lead-safe behaviors. It is important to note that gasoline containing lead was officially banned for passenger car fuel in 1996, but lead is still used in fuel for aircraft, race cars, farm equipment, and marine engines. Activities that may cause lead exposure. There is a list of examples of hobbies or activities that may cause lead exposure. Next to the list are pictures of pottery, jewelry, a stained glass window, an electronic circuit, a two-drawer dresser, a house, and a ceramic dish. Some hobbies and activities are known to be potential sources of lead exposure, such as making stained glass and furniture refinishing. Hunting and marksmanship use guns and ammunition, which may contain lead. Also, some elements of fishing tackle may contain lead. Those are just a few common examples of activities with potential lead exposure. It is a good idea to research a new hobby to understand possible lead exposures. If you are exposed to lead through work or a hobby, to prevent carrying lead in the home, wear protective equipment such as an outer layer of clothes that you can remove before entering your car, house, or school after the activity. Wash your face, hands, and any uncovered skin thoroughly after you finish participation also. Children's Toys and Jewelry With two circular images, one of children's toys and the other of children's jewelry. Lead can be found in paint, metal, and plastic parts of some toys and toy jewelry, especially if these toys or jewelry were imported or are antique. To reduce children's risk for lead exposure, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission tests and issues recalls of current products that may potentially expose children to lead. Recalls on current products that could potentially expose a child to lead can be found at the Consumer Product Safety Commission website, cpsc.gov recalls, or by calling them at 1-800-638-2272. Cosmetics shows a woman in a bathrobe sitting at a dressing table looking into a round mirror applying makeup. Cosmetics that aren't regulated by the FDA can be a source of lead exposure. For example, coal is a cosmetic used by the ancient Egyptians, but is still used by some cultures today as eye makeup. It is a potential source of lead exposure. For domestic cosmetics, the FDA regulates all color additives used when producing cosmetics. So, it is important to research any brands you use and where these products are made to ensure they aren't counterfeit. Counterfeit cosmetics appear to be or simulate identifiable brands. Counterfeit cosmetics and other products may contain lead. Marksmanship shows a picture of an indoor firing range. Ammunition is a common source of lead exposure for those participating in marksmanship indoors or outdoors. Aspects of marksmanship that increase the risk of carrying lead home include not wearing protective clothing while participating, or improperly handling or cleaning your protective gear may bring lead dust from the ammunition into your car, home, and or school. The lead dust created from firing may adhere to hair, hands, arms, shoes, etc. Poor ventilation at indoor firing ranges may help concentrate and circulate lead dust, but there are ways to mitigate these risks. Wear proper personal protective equipment, such as an outer layer of clothing, to be removed upon leaving the fire range. This garment should be placed in a bag after disrobing and laundered separately from other clothes. Shower after shooting to remove lead dust from the body. And if not wearing any outer layer of clothing, change clothes to avoid carrying lead dust into the home. 
ensure indoor firing ranges use HEPA filtration systems, and use lead-free materials whenever possible. Practicing lead-safe behaviors is a great way to prevent exposure. Eating foods rich in iron, calcium, or vitamin C, frequent hand washing, and keeping children and pregnant women out of contaminated areas are great practices to remember. Eating foods rich in iron, calcium, and vitamin C helps decrease the absorption of lead into the body. Frequent hand washing and cleaning of window frames and floors eliminates one of the main avenues for lead dust exposure. If people have lead plumbing pipes in their homes, they can let the tap run for three to five minutes before using it to flush out the lead contaminated water. As we have shown, some occupations and hobbies may expose people to lead, which can be brought into the home. Creating barriers between this exposure and children, like removing shoes outside the home, is very important. How can people help? Learn more about possible lead exposures in people's environment and practice lead safe behaviors. Other ideas are to conduct school research projects to share the knowledge and help spread the word about possible lead exposures. Share knowledge with friends and family. Be careful with buying products by researching brands and ingredients. Understanding where a product comes from and how its ingredients are regulated is a great first step in becoming a mindful consumer. Also, check out the sources of cosmetics, pottery, jewelry, toys, candy, canned foods, and other items that may be purchased online or in flea markets. Shows two teen boys sitting on beanbag chairs. Lead exposure is a problem we can prevent. This presentation was developed in collaboration with the American Academy of Pediatrics. The contents of this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, or the U.S. government. Thank you for viewing the Childhood Lead Exposure Prevention Education video for high school students. For questions or comments regarding this segment, please send an email to leadinfo at cdc.gov and indicate high school video question in the subject line. Here is a list of references. Learn more by reading these resources.